the anthem has been played and the tribute to the United States of America made at White Bear Lake Stadium in White Bear Lake, Minnesota, as SCC Sports brings you high school soccer on a Monday night. With Alex West out at my side, Jeff Disher here, and we get set to, to see the White Bear Lake Bears take on the number two in 3A East Ridge Raptors. Alex, as we introduce the starters in net future, uh, with the White Bear Lake Bears sending Kyle Christensen to the net and the East Ridge Raptors sending Dylan Parkinson to the net, what uh, do we need to key in on as we get going here? Well, I think what we've seen be a thorn in the side of White Bear Lake since they have been playing, at least especially over the last 10 years, as a White Bear graduate, White Bear boys soccer was never one of the focuses of the alumni here in White Bear Lake. So as a result, I think it starts on your defensive third, where in order to stop this potent offense of the Eastridge Raptors, they have to play well, especially on that back line defensively for Kyle Gendy's boys. And then they need to be able to find ways to get to the ball and get Gavin Rogers available inside of the 18 to create high-quality scoring chances. They do that, they'll have a chance against Eastridge here tonight, but I think the prohibitive favorite in this one is the Raptors, especially coming in as class number 3A's number 2. The Raptors in the... in the white... in the whites with the Bears in the orange waiting for kick from Swingtown, although Swingtown shouldn't be White Bear Lake, Minnesota. Well, it is worth saying, certainly, that whenever Kirk Passell does a announcing gig in White Bear Lake, Hill Murray or wherever, <laughs> that Swingtown <laughs> is the signal that the event has started, and certainly that has been the case here for soccer tonight. We are underway as... Uh, the ball kicked out of play. It will go to the men in white, being the Raptors. It'll be Lippman to throw that in. Long long throw and hit it out of play. So call that a gain of about 40 yards in field position for the Raptors. Well, I think on the weather side too tonight, Jeff, is the wind is blowing slightly to the west end here of White Bear Stadium so it, the attacking side will favor Eastridge at least here in the first half and even though it's not a strong wind by any means just that subtle wind to add that extra curve on the ball will be something to watch as we shoot to the left here. You uh, and that is uh, Jihoon You sends it cross field as the Raptors play it up the far touch line and back to midfield it goes Larson goes back to grab that defensively for the Raptors who finished 8-3-0 and in an abbreviated 2020 uh, Suburban East Conference season, tops in the league. They finished 8-4 and on the year last season. As this one comes up courtesy of Adrian LeGravere, and the whistle goes, holding play in the first minute and 20 seconds. Not sure that I saw much there to blow the whistle on, but it will be a, a free kick here in a good position for Eastridge. And this is exactly as we were opening the contest here is these defensive third free kicks. White Bear Lake cannot afford to give many of those up. And the kick courtesy of Lee right in to the outstretched arms of Kyle Christensen. White Bear Lake's first defensive possession of the contest. 40 minutes, uh, the half length in high school soccer here in Minnesota as the ball bouncing around like a jumping bean and finally settled down by the Raptors as they'll control up the far side. You know, Jeff, one of the things that I'm curious about and getting your opinion on is that we've seen that at every level of soccer except for the high school and the collegiate level, that clock counts down. Would you be in favor of making it to count up in order to align with the other sports in the other leagues? I with the with the with the sport of soccer, I would be in favor of it counting up. However, that is a I'll hedge my opinion here and say that would be a state high school league decision. As White Bear Lake will control that about three minutes or about three minutes in, so we're about to start the fourth minute. And East Ridge has had the major or the lion's share, I should say, of the uh, possession in the early going. And I'll be interested to see if White Bear Lake can stem the tide and turn the field in their direction. Well, I think Eastridge is taking advantage of that pretty quickly here early where they're not necessarily trying to work 
towards the white bear goal but they're taking advantage of that extra space that they have back where they seem to be resetting on that back defensive line just a little bit too much instead of taking the ball up the field and i think that hesitancy just to see what they're giving you is going to be something like right here that might work for eastridge as an outlet feed goes into the outstretched arms of kyle christensen white bear looking to stem the tide and turn up field in an attacking manner as the ball goes up far side, White Bear Lake only gets as far as the midfield stripe or just a little bit further than that. Man down, foul called. Eastridge, free kick. As we talk about the keys of the game again too, Jeff, I think one of the things that White Bear Lake has to do a particularly strong job of doing that's the second foul that we've seen conceded on their side of midfield. And you can't give the Eastridge Raptors chances even from this far out. As the free kick sails in towards the 18-yard box, Eastridge having trouble setting or settling the ball down. And White Bear Lake with Porter Dross goes out ahead towards the midfield strike. But they are thwart the Bears are thwarted by the Raptors. And the Raptors bring it back with Lipman doing the business. Now Eastridge settles the ball down. This goes to Jihoon Yu, the senior midfielder for the Eastridge Raptors. Now up the far side, just past the midfield stripe, go the Raptors and are thwarted on that far side. Maybe a switch of fields is necessary for the Raptors to control. Nathaniel Lee, the senior attack for the Raptors, worked it near a corner, and it will go as a corner for the Raptors, the first of the contest. It's a pretty good defensive play on that back line by Colin Thompson, too, to kick that ball and to challenge well on that far side, uh, you. But a corner here, and actually, I mean, it is it'll be it a is goal a goal kick. kick. Let me correct myself. So even better defending than by Thompson to force that goal kick too, and just work you into that corner and force that error. And with. With the rules being what they are in, in, a, in the state of Minnesota, any player on the field can take that goal kick. And it does not have to be the goalkeeper. As the ball headed down by Lippman. Eastridge back on offense. This will go to Ravi Kumar. And out of play. Corner kick, Eastridge. Corner kick, Eastridge, the first of the game, as I tried to get to in the last sequence. However, these set plays are going to be plays that Eastridge will need to capitalize on. They can't do that there. Goal kick for Goal White Bear Lake. Well, and I think the clear setup there, Jeff, was they were looking for that header off the back post, but I, it, was an, it was just odd where they tried to set up the run post, but the only nobody moved. And rather than working towards it, I know that their offside comes into play a little bit there, but nobody moved to that front side of the post looking for that redirection until it was well out of position. So kind of a wasted corner kick there by the Raptors. And if, if the Raptors are to have success on that set play, you need to have everybody in sync, and they were not on that occasion. Ball headed down towards midfield, and White Bear Lake looking for control, and they get it up the near side. And just as I say that, the ball kicked out of play. It'll go to Eastridge. Comment I don't know that that's the commentator's curse, though, as that one is thrown in by Jihoon Yu. Yu uh, gave it over to Lee, and Lee switches fields. Seventh minute of play in reference to our earlier conversation about the clock counting upward. I'm doing the math in my head. Parker Wellman dropped that one off, and it went to Lee. Lee kicked that one forward into the 18-yard box, settled down by the Raptors, and cleared by White Bear Lake, looking for a foul. On, Going to finally get a whistle, holding play. Well, this free kick will go for White Bear Lake. It was a good battle there with Eli Treichel and the frontline attacker on the striker position for Wellman for East Ridge. But I think that that last little move to try to get in front of Treichel 
was ultimately what drew the whistle for the Raptors. And that's really good defending, too, by Trinkle. We talked in our open about how good White Bear Lake had to be in the defensive third, and so far, they've been pretty darn good. Wellman kicked that one in right into the outstretched arms of Kyle Christensen, the sophomore goalkeeper for the White Bear Lake Bears. That'll be the first shot on target for Eastridge so far. White Bear Lake with a shot on or in any way, shape, or form. Now shots that hit the hit the crossbar or the post, much like in our uh, favorite game of ice hockey, count the same. They do not count on the shot count at all. Up the far side come the Raptors, and I feel like we'll be saying that a lot in this opening game of our doubleheader. We'll see the Varsity Girls game, weather permitting, at 7 o'clock as this one is worked back towards Dylan Parkinson. The junior goalkeeper makes a mistake to score. White Bear Lake on the board, one to nothing. Well, Gavin Rogers does exactly what Gavin Rogers has the capability to do. When I taught in White Bear Lake, everybody spoke so well about Gavin Rogers' ability in the attacking third, and he made the goaltender pay there. That was a lazy clearance by the goaltender, Parkinson, and credit Rogers for being right there to scoop that ball up and put it past him. And so the goal in the ninth minute for Rogers, the first shot on by White Bear Lake, results in pay dirt. Rogers puts White Bear Lake up one nothing, and I feel as though... That goal supports my point. White Bear Lake will have to capitalize on Eastridge's mistakes to get lucky. Sort of like getting down and dirty if you want to look at it from a football perspective. East well, Eastridge controls this. Go ahead. Well, and that's the nice part, too, about here as Eastridge tries to get a chance on there, is that like most sports that have that net and ball into them philosophy. Soccer's very much the same way. You get inside the dirty areas and you're going to end up with goals. Inside the 8 or the 16, it doesn't matter. Just get in those high-scoring areas and you'll have a good chance of putting one past a goaltender. Lippman and company work this one ahead for the Raptors, who are down one nothing in a stunning turn of events here in the early going. LaGraver switches fields for the Raptors. As this one will come back to Nathaniel Lee. Lee tries to go back cross field or switches fields to the far side. Ball out of play. It'll stay here with Eastridge. It's an interesting setup here, too, for the Raptors, where it's almost as though they have a 4-2-3-2, two, two, favoring very much heavy on the offense. If you're White Bear Lake, you know that one goal is not going to win this contest. One goal is probably not going to tie this contest and get you a point out of it. So you need to keep the offense on and, like we've been saying, take advantage of the Eastridge miscues if they happen. Wellman dropped that one off. Eastridge almost making a miscue on that corner uh, moments ago that uh, didn't materialize as Lee controls this from near midfield. White Bear Lake also having trouble corralling the ball just to regain possession. That might be a key as that ball has some backspin on it. Settled down, out of play. It goes to Eastridge on the throw. You will throw that one in short. And you will get that back at the touchline. He got it over to Lippman. And Lippman dropped it off. Got it to Wellman. Wellman looking for a teammate in the box. Wellman crossed, got blocked, and out of play, it'll go to Eastridge. And that just another testament to how well White Bear Lake has been defending in that third is that the passes haven't been into the inside part of the 18. They've just been batted out of touch, and unfortunately for Eastridge, they'll keep coming. They'll keep getting those opportunities to get those balls in deep, but unfortunately, we'll see what happens if they get one here. Crossed into the box, headed down. White Bear Lake has to turn and go, and they... Can't do the business there as that shot in on Christensen, and he's up to it. Fourth Eastridge shot, fourth uh, second on goal for the Raptors so far. But both of the shots that have been on the goaltender, Christensen, have not been high-quality shots. They've been just outside the edge of the 18 and right in the middle of the box. As White Bear Lake turns and goes this direction, the Bears wearing their orange with white numerals. Eastridge the white with dark numerals as Eastridge controls this. It'll go to you on the near side. You drops it off to Lippman. 
and you did not have or was not sensing any hurry when you dropped that one off to Lippman as Eastridge still with control and the lion's share of the possession. And we are in the 13th or uh, about to be the 14th minute. Ball headed down by Lee. It's one thing I wish we had was were legitimate percentage style uh, possession statistics. However, based on the visual evidence, I would say Eastridge with the lion's share of the possession as Lee kicks that one ahead. Whistle goes. White Bear Lake ball. And if I had to quantify it, Jeff, too, and of course, like you said, we don't have the statistics on possession, I'd have to say at least 70 to 30% in favor of the Raptors right now. They've been having the better of the possession, but they've been, I think they've been trying to figure out what this White Bear Lake defense is presenting them so far. They've gotten some great opportunities on the attacking side of midfield, but they just haven't done much with them so far. White Bear Lake with a free kick as they look to add to their lead. Ball settled down at midfield by Zhang. And over to the far side go the Bears. And just as I say that, commentator's curse leads to a game of Pong that a par or Atari would appreciate as this one is brought ahead by Rodgers. Rodgers up the near side. Rodgers into the 18. He'll cross to an open man. And Easteridge up to it. Well, and Olsen, unfortunately, that ball just a little bit high. You, see, you saw him have to play it with the chest. In order to try to knock it down, if that ball's on that left foot, it's Ol Olsen's opposite foot, but certainly a great chance available for the Bears, and that's one that they'd like to have back to add some more insurance. White Bear Lake with possession on the on the throw-in on the far side. And the Bears gain about uh, 10 yards in field position as the ball headed out of play. Well, it's certainly something that you can see, too, in the game of Soccer is using that into touch as a way to be able to navigate around the field and use the defense of your opposing team in favor of your offense. And as they say, a good defense leads to a good offense. As White Bear Lake has shown with the one nothing lead. 25 minutes to go in the half, so we are starting the 15th minute. Ball brought ahead by Eastridge, and this one goes to Jihoon Yu. Yu dropped that one off for a free kick just out of the reach of Wellman. Out of play. White Bear Lake ball. He's fake. These fakes on the throw-ins also, as a former soccer official, throw me off. But uh, the official with the blue shirt uh, is okay with it, so we're okay with it as Eastridge with possession. This goes to Lippman. Lippman, drop that one back to you. Well, I think one of the things that we're seeing now, too, is that you see the White Bear Lake defense and that 4-3-3 that they run so frequently. You see them starting to drop back even more so into their defensive third. And even there's Rodgers, 20 yards out from just the edge of the 18 or the edge of the 6, making a great play on the defensive side. Ball out of play. It will go to White Bear Lake. And the last time these two teams met, back in September of last year, Eastridge took the 2-0 decision uh, from White Bear Lake. Well, this White Bear Lake boys team, too, played a little bit of a spoiler role in the section playoffs, or the section tournament a year ago as they upset Roseville in the opening round before losing to a stout defense and penalty kicks in the Park of Cottage Grove Wolfpack a year ago. For Carl Gendy's staff, you certainly like to see the continued growth and development of these players and especially on the defensive side, converting those rushes from the defensive third into the attacking side is something that we'll have to watch and see. And speaking of the Bears, they do not have uh, the services of Junior, def or junior D, uh, Tegan Geese. He uh, broke his leg over the weekend, and during the pregame warm-up, they, as a goal kick, will, will be the call. It's Ravakumar, the substitute for... Eastridge, but getting back to Tegan Geese, uh, Geese broke his leg on Saturday, and so uh, the Bears honored him 
pregame with a number 12 in their semicircle as they warmed up on their side of the field. Well, and in the injury as it happened, too, they didn't just honor him in a pregame circle. They honored him with offense. Seven goals <laughs> out the last time for White Bear Lake. And it is White Bear Lake still or still with the 1-0 lead honoring Tegan in that sense as well as this one is controlled by Le Gravere for Eastridge. And Eastridge not at all content uh, with playing on the back foot as they've won four of their first five contests on the season, drawing with Woodbury back on September 9th in a 1-1 uh, decision. Their only goal given up Uh by the Raptors thus far in the 2021 boys soccer season. Well, I think for Coach Bidwell, too, for the Raptors, making the substitution and getting Ravi Kumar on early I think was a good switch because what they had going just was not the high-scoring opportunities that the Raptors need to be successful today. And we're almost 20 minutes in and still four shots total, two on goal for East Ridge, and none of the two have been particularly strong chances. As White Bear Lake looking to outlet across their uh, side of the midfield stripe. About to complete 19 minutes in White Bear Lake in the first of two that we will have for you on our air, the uh, girls' varsity game coming up after this one concludes. And the way the game has slowed down, Alex, I wouldn't be surprised if we see 1-0 go a long way, but I do agree with your point that one won't necessarily be the win the uh, number of goals needed to win is that ball out of play off the foot of Eli Trichel. Well, when you hear the encouragement from Joe Wallach in the midfield area, that's a fantastic slide tackle by the junior Trichel. A little bit undersized compared to his compatriots on the football er, on the soccer pitch tonight, but otherwise, excellent slide tackle by the defender. Great foul there. I'll allow football pitch. That works for me. About 20 minutes in. Jeff, it might work for you, but I don't know if that's going to work for the American <laughs> audience that we have tonight. Ah, uh, goodness. 20 minutes in, 1 0 to White Bear Lake. Those are the tones of Alex Westad. I am Jeff Disher. Glad you have joined us as a free kick uh, stemming from a White Bear Lake foul is uh, coming from Eastridge into the box. It goes. And we'll do it again. We had a whistle there, and the Raptor f folks don't like it. It was a little bit delayed. I wouldn't either. And I think we may have a card come out. We do. It'll be a yellow card. That'll be issued here to number 11, Ravi Kumar. And I wonder what happened in there, because it was a foul against White Bear Lake and a conceded foul at that. But Ravi Kumar will have to come out for a little bit with a yellow card. Uh, I dare say he would uh, be substituted for the rest of the half as Wellman comes back in to replace him. And the officials on the far side of the field deciding what's going to go, uh, what's going to happen. But that yellow card, our first of the matchup. The whistle will go free kick once it, once more for Eastridge as that goes wide of the mark. And it'll lead to a goal kick for the White Bear Lake Bears. And if you're the Raptors, it's a free kick that you're, you're mad about. Because in the first one, whether it be that nobody moved because of the whistle, but the ball was in the back of the net. And so certainly if you're Eastridge, you're frustrated by the officiating in that case. But at the end of the day, like if you had that play that worked for you so well there, why not go right back to it? If it, yeah, if it worked once, but I agree with you. If it worked once before, why not go back to what works and not try to reinvent the wheel? Foul there should be a free kick to White Bear Lake, and it is. Well, that that foul there was caused by the Trico line drive instead of getting some air under that ball and sending it the length of the pitch. And unfortunately, for the Raptors, that free kick went or that foul went against them. White Bear Lake looking to add to their. Lead of 1-0 as the 22nd minute commences. Eastridge with possession at midfield. This one is dropped to LaGravere. LaGravere went back over off the official who is in play. I've been hit with a soccer ball as I've been officiating. Thus I know and can relate. 
Eastridge with possession as that ball uh, came off the official right back towards the midfield. And now worked up the far side for a cross that does not materialize. It leads to a corner kick for Eastridge. And again, give credit to Nikki O'Brien, too, for running this play out and waiting for that battle with Lee to happen down there. But the corner goes by the way for the Raptors, and it'll be Sitkowicz again to take it on that far side. Sitkowicz readies, crossed into the box, into the, the mixer. And out of the box it'll go. Eastridge still with possession as that one falls to Ravi Kumar. Or so it looked. Actually, check that. Let's look. Rivera, who went down. Nothing Goal doing. Bear, Goal Bear kick, Bear. White Bear Lake. Well, if I'm the Raptors, they're looking for the penalty there. And I think that it was just getting that piece of the ball there by Colin Thompson that allowed for that to not be called as it'll be a goal kick for White Bear Lake. But certainly with the last two calls, the major calls going against East Ridge, the yellow card to Ravakumar in the 21st minute, and then that non-call there, if you would call it that, I think that the Raptors are a little bit frustrated by the officiating so far. In a game, they're trailing one to nothing. But you, counter, you also counter that with attacking play. And in the middle portion of the half here, I've we've seen attacking in spades from Eastridge. They just can't make anything happen that you nor, or you and I would consider a grade A opportunity as a substitute for Eastridge is Ravakumar. Well, he'll come back in here. And again, I think Ravakumar still with that yellow card. He'll have to be a little bit careful the rest of the way. I think I agree with you when he first got that card. The idea of keeping him out for the half I think would have been the better idea, but you got to get something going here. And especially on that right side, too, where Nicky O'Brien and Nathaniel Lee, that's going to be a matchup we'll watch all night on that right side wing. Throw in to Eastridge on the far side. They're trying to turn and go. Is that, I guess we'll call that a low cross, is rejected back to midfield. Now Eastridge having trouble controlling the ball like White Bear Lake did in the early minutes. Except White Bear Lake did a little waste management as that ball out of play, it looked like. Uh, White Bear Lake did a little little bit of waste management in getting their goal down and dirty uh, in the first few minutes of the game. Yeah, the turnover by Parkinson setting up the Rogers goal in the ninth minute. That early goal certainly has changed the flow of the game, too, where White Bear Lake can play slower. And when they play slower, I think that they play better. Eastridge definitely not comfortable as that pass intercepted. Up the near side, ball still bouncing around. It'll go to LeGravere. LeGravere, near side. And into the corner, Eastridge still with control. As it'll be a throw-in on the near side. And the ball will eventually get to you. You crosses into the box. White Bear Lake shifts in and rejects that back to midfield. Well read on that ball defensively, too, by White Bear Lake's number 10, Porter Drost. Great play in the midfield area, adjusting and then using that shoulder to get that ball out of the way. Eastridge still with possession, and I, based on statistical uh, evidence, I would have pegged Eastridge to be the better team, as it were, just based on the last three years in terms of performance, or at least two of the last three years, winning eight times uh, each season, going back to 2019, uh, finishing tops in the Suburban East. They had 12 wins in the 2019 season as they look for their fifth one this evening. Ball crossed into the box, and it will go to Christensen. Well, if, again, Jeff, if you're looking at a microcosm of the shot so far from East Ridge, all three have been soft, easy shots on Christensen. They have to get into that 18, and not even into the 18, but get further into the 6, too, just to generate those opportunities, because right now you're settling for shots that are much less than what the Raptors are capable of. Def definitely less than ideal. Is that ball out of play? It'll go to... Uh, should be Eastridge ball as both teams getting set for substitutions. Among others for White Bear, we'll see Cooper Moser coming in 
and it will be a free kit to White Bear Lake at the midfield stripe. Well, and Jeff, you were mentioning too the last 10 matchups between these two teams. For White Bear Lake, in the nine losses that they have in the last 10 against Eastridge, they have been shut out each of those times. So that's something to watch too, is that when they score, odds are it's going to be better for them. Entering the match for Eastridge, number two, Keenan blocked the substitute for Eastridge. Mosier and Anderson, the entrance for White Bear Lake. White Bear Lake with two wins in 2020, one win in 2019 and 2018 in the Suburban East. Two wins in 2018, 2019, three wins last season. Well, and that's kind of, if we wanted to extrapolate that further, White Bear Lake soccer certainly has had its downs, especially dating back to my time as a White Bear Lake high school student. The soccer program here has never, the wins have never come, but the development of these players as people and as future leaders has always been strong. It's just the wins haven't translated on the football pitch. And you can say the same about all of the athletic programs here at White Bear Lake High School as well great kids to be around as Eastridge controls this, but uh, great campus too. You were a lucky man to be a student here. Well, and even it's going through changes now too with the split campus model being done away within a couple of years when the renovations to North Campus are made, and it'll be a 9-12 to high school. I think it was one of three high schools in the country that have the split campus 9-10, and 11-12 and 12 model. So to have everybody together 9-12, and 12, it'll make for a much better high school experience for these kids. Eastridge controls this as it goes to William Larson, the senior midfielder for the Raptors. The Raptors entering play, as we said, uh, four w victories via the shutout. And the only goal that they've uh, allowed has led to a draw against Woodbury back on September 9th. Great foot by Thompson on the first denial, and then even better full body block by Porter Drost on the second chance. The defense for White Bear Lake has been stout tonight. I don't know that you can say the same about Eastridge, as this one is controlled by Wellman up the near side. Or check that, excuse me, that's Jihoon Yu. Ball dropped off to Larson. And Eastridge has to figure out what they need to do to uh, hit pay dirt on the football field here at White Bear Lake Stadium. As that cross in on Christensen, he'll make the save. I'm not even going to utter a vowel on what grade uh, chance that was. It's the greatest chance that we've seen as far as what Eastridge has put on net so far today. By a consonant. Yeah, long point, <laughs> long shots from 25, 35 yards out. Not good enough to get those scoring chances. That previous attack before was just really good defense from White Bear Lake. Do that again. Parkins, or uh, check that. That is Reva Kumar as the ball out of play for oh, a goal kick Bear for White Bear Lake. Well, and statistically so far, East Ridge leading in most, actually all major categories. Six shots to one, four shots on to one. Two corners for the Raptors, none for White Bear Lake. Attacking free kicks, two for East Ridge. They've had three in the attacking half. White Bear Lake without one. That ball deflects in on Christensen, and he allows a corner kick via that late deflection. And I think, too, waiting for that to come down a little bit before making the play or coming out to get to that ball first and then just denying that corner kick opportunity. This is the near side corner kick that will happen here for Eastridge, the better side here for Sikowich. And we'll see what they do. They did that back post the last time. Sikowich goes to the back post, headed on and over the cage. And it will lead to a goal kick for White Bear Lake. And so now we know what Eastridge will do on... We should have them right here. Concession stand at halftime. Check it out. These phenomenal hot dogs right here at the White Bear Lake concession stand. Check it out at halftime, folks. Hot dogs. 22nd mm. minute. I won't look at a hot dog the same way again. Kirk Pazell again, a man <laughs> of many traits, this time advertising delicious hot dogs <laughs> at the concession stand as only he can. Uh... 
And there are other reasons why I won't look at a hot dog this or the same way again. We won't get into those. Well, if this was a Hill Murray hockey game, Kirk would be saying the hot dogs, of course, big as your head. But <laughs> I don't know that we have those here at the White Bear uh, Stadium. I highly doubt that as a foul occurs, Eastridge will, t- will get the free kick here. <laughs> one nothing White Bear Lake. 33rd minute upcoming. And you're thinking at home, look at Dish. He can count up. I digress. Free kick on the way for the Raptors who need something, and they need something now. to flex in on goal. Christensen says you're going to need to do better than that. Well, and that's where I think that that was the right decision to make that fake play to with Lagravere in front of Nathaniel Lee. I like that decision to try to switch it up a little bit. What I don't like, again right at the goaltender with power, but just not good enough of a chance. Three on two, rush the other way for White Bear Lake, but Eastridge with the defensive capability to avoid the onslaught there as the ball quickly thrown in by the Bears, bounces around and controlled by Parkinson. 34th minute, 1-0 White Bear Lake. And you really get the sense of urgency from the Raptors, too. You hear the coaching staff shouting, come on, Dylan, move the ball. And just sitting there taking his time. Again, if this game gets to half and weather starts to become a factor, after it's half over, it's an official game at that point. And I don't see, I I don't know if you would agree, but I don't see Eastridge playing with the urgency uh, with that in mind. As the ball kicked away by White Bear Lake, who are just content to slow things down and say, hey, you've got to do the work. We've already scored a goal this evening. Lippman throws that one cross field, and it eventually will get to LaGravere. LaGravere threw that one over, and that pass intended for Nathaniel Lee, the senior forward for Eastridge, unable to do the business as that one up over the the uh, football crossbar. Goal kick and substitutions coming for White Bear Lake being Watson Harris also in for the Bears. So the two substitutions coming on for White Bear Lake, you have a freshman and a sophomore. And I think that's one of the things that White Bear and Carl Jenny would certainly be well encouraged for is the youth of this White Bear Lake team. We talked about the development of these players as young men, but certainly as soccer players as well, and you want to see that continue to be developed as time goes by. White Bear Lake with a free kick as we get towards the 35th minute ending, meaning five minutes to play in the half almost. Free kick for the Bears goes up and rainbows towards the top of the box. And that rainbow comes out near the 25 y- foot or 25 yard line on the football field, and it's controlled by the Bears. Now Eastridge content to send that ball just past midfield, but no sustained no sustained possession for Eastridge, and that should be their calling card. We'll have another substitution here for the Raptors as Arana Lorando will come back in. And again, they're starting to load up that offensive side too, but the rotation between Ravakumar and Arana Lorando seems to be working here for the Raptors, but there's just no urgency so far. And, and no firepower with their shot making. Ball thrown in on the far side. Out of play to White Bear Lake. Again, what makes soccer unique compared to other sports, that running time aspect. Except for certain situations, you can run that clock down as much as you'd like. And White Bear Lake with the 1-0 lead, 37th minute. They can do what they please with that 1-0 lead. Ball thrown in on the far side. Battle for it towards the corner flag. Out of play to Eastridge. Ball touched over by Ashton Johnston, the sophomore midfielder. 
out of play to White Bear Lake. And you're seeing just enough. <laughs> Kirk. Um, the, the Bears are showing more urgency here than what, what Eastridge is. And it's, it's kind of frustrating, too, when you're playing 1-0 up where you have more offense than a team that does. What would Eastridge do for a snicker bar? <laughs> Score a goal. <laughs> <laughs> I digress. And, yes, I am aware that the, that the proper product placement would be a Klondike bar. However, uh, we're working next door with who we're working with. Two and three quarters minutes remaining in the opening half. Ball controlled up the far side by, or up the near side rather, by Lee. And the ball bounds out of play to Eastridge's fourth or fifth corner. This will be the fourth corner of the game for Eastridge. And they've been better here from the left hand side. It'll be a left handed corner once again from Lee. As Lee kicks that one in, low line drive out of the box, and that will rainbow out of play. Goal kick coming for White Bear Lake. So if you're the Raptors, again, the frustration not necessarily anymore on the officiating. A little bit, again, those two big calls that didn't necessarily go Eastridge's way, but the yeah, lack of execution that. cleanly by this Eastridge team it just hasn't been there. No, and you can say that from the word go as we are under two minutes remaining in the opening half. And again, I will remind you, any player in Minnesota Boys High School of Soccer can take that goal kick, not necessarily the goalkeeper's responsibility. As Eastridge looking for offense and looking to dramatically change the pitch and change the tempo of the game. Crossed in, ball bouncing around. And it deflects in on Christensen. He'll make the save. I was much like an Eastridge player there. Not sure if it went in. So I was waiting much like you or much like all of you were. Well, credit Christensen again with the save. I mean, he's been fantastic. He hasn't been pressured much in high quality chances, but he's made the saves that he's had to make, and that's exactly what you look for in your goaltender. That uh, that shot just there, the uh, highest pressured shot he's had to face as we are in the final minute of play in the first half, throwing to Eastridge on the far side coming. And uh, oh, to be a bird in the huddle. Uh, on the Eastridge side of the ball, wondering what they do to control things offensively as White Bear Lake will take it here with under a half minute left in the opening half. Alex and I will recap the first half at halftime. And uh, we'll have general, I suppose, general soccer conversation at the half. As 10 seconds are left in the half, White Bear Lake will go into recess with a 1-0 lead. Well, and so frequently in the game of soccer, you see that that one bounce, that one chance that goes your way really is a difference so far. The Eastridge Raptors have been the better team through the first 40, except where it matters truly on the scoreboard. 11 shots to two for the Raptors over White Bear Lake. On goal, six shots to two. But well, the difference, Gavin Rogers tally in the ninth minute for number nine. That's made the difference so far, and the Bears take a one to nothing lead into the half. We will pause. Halftime activities upcoming in the second half upcoming on your home for White Bear Lake Athletics. SCC TV. COVID-19 has changed how we hang with our girls. Now it's time to take the first step that lets us get back to girls tripping instead of solo sipping. Before we can safely come together, we need the facts. As COVID-19 vaccines become available, you may have questions. Should I get it? Is it safe? Should I wait? It's smart to question. Now get the facts at GetVaccineAnswers.org so you can make an informed decision when vaccines are available to you. Every day. Every day. Millions of people are connecting. 
And even though we're overcoming obstacles, watching each other's backs, and banding together, we should still make an effort. We should still make an effort to get to know each other on a deeper level. Father, cosplayer, mentor, actor. It's time we take a step forward. It's time we take a step forward. Come together and discover how accepting our differences can, can make, make us stronger. What if you could feel in control of your retirement in just a few clicks? At aceyourretirement.org, you can. Start with a free three-minute chat with Avo, your friendly digital retirement coach. Just answer some simple questions like, how do you feel about your ability to save for retirement? Or in how many years do you want to retire? To get free action items customized just for you, get your retirement back on track at aceyourretirement.org. COVID-19 has changed how we show up and show out with our family. Now it's time to take the first step that lets us get back to talking smack with the side of mac and cheese. Before we can safely come together, we need the facts. As COVID-19 vaccines become available, you may have questions. Should I get it? Is it safe? Should I wait? It's smart to question. Now, get the facts at GetVaccineAnswers.org so you can make an informed decision when vaccines are available to you. Back at White Bear Lake Stadium on the campus of White on the south campus of White Bear Lake High School, it is the White Bear Lake Bears one, the Eastridge Raptors none, with the public or one of the public address voices of the University of St. Thomas in Alex Westad. I am Jeff Disher, and the Eastridge Raptors, Alex, were struggling in the opening half. I, I don't know that I'd say that they were struggling. It was just, when you look at, uh, football is such a finicky sport where you have to be able to execute inside of the 18 and inside the attacking third. That was our key to the game for what? Eastridge was who was going to be better for White Bear Lake on the defensive side or Eastridge on the attacking side of that third of the field. And the answer so far, it's been White Bear Lake. The shots have been there for Eastridge, 11 total, six on goal. But those six on goal haven't been high, high danger, high quality. quality. They've been out from 35 to 25 yards out, and they've been right at the goaltender. So for Eastridge, in the second half, that final level of execution and that chaos inside of the lower third has to be there for the Raptors, where it failed to be there through the first 40. And at halftime, because we were curious... Uh, Eastridge led in their contest with Woodbury at the end of 40 minutes where they drew 1-1, surrendering the tying goal in the second half. But Eastridge has not surrendered a goal other than that. As the team switch ends, so you'll see Eastridge going left to right on your screen. White Bear Lake going right to left. Well, and as we take a look at the weather here today, it's about 73 degrees. The storms are coming. And if there's lightning in the area, we will know. The White Bear Lake Bears have spent $10,000 to put a lightning detection system in behind us here at the South Campus. And if there is thunder or lightning and we need to move, we will know. That's what I've been told. I haven't heard it yet, but I have been told if there is lightning, we will know. So be quick. It is Apparently it is loud and there's a lot of flashing. And there's no, no mistaking it, that's for sure. Something to monitor in the second half. Another thing to monitor in the second half. Welcome to the jungle indeed. And so far, the only difference maker is that Gavin Rogers goal in the ninth minute off of the cleanup. And that attacking third position, just that mistake by the goaltender Parkinson was the difference so far in the early going. A lot of time left. Let's see what the Bears and the Raptors have in store. Second half underway, an Eastridge player tumbled, and possession goes to Eastridge after the mixer in the midfield. White Bear Lake controlling as this one comes back towards midfield. 
That was Duf Dufresne who threw that one ahead. And now Eastridge turning and going with it. Nathaniel Lee goes and switches fields. This goes to Lippman, who threw, or who threw it back to Lee. And now Eastridge turning to go. That is nine in white. That's Parker Wellman up the near side. Out of play. We'll stay here. Eastridge ball. Well, and Eastridge had four corners in the first half. They'll get one here to start, really. Just inside the first minute and change here of the second half. And they were better on the left-hand side on the corners in the second chance. So perhaps on the right side, a chance to try something new. I want to say that the Raptors should be looking for the middle. Not necessarily that back post, because White Bear's been, been defending that well. But look for the middle. Look on the near side. But then White Bear Lake will adjust to that. And what do you do when White Bear Lake is adjusted? Adjust first. <laughs> Corner kick. Rainbow's in. They went far post. And as we know, that does not do the business if you're Eastridge on this night. They maintain possession in the midfield as that one is kicked ahead by White Bear Lake. Ian to the waiting arms of Dylan Parkinson. And Parkinson throws it immediately to Nathaniel Lee up the near side. Lee threw that one over and got it to Reva Kumar, who, has a, or who is on a yellow card. So... The senior midfielder has to be a little bit careful uh, to avoid Eastridge going down a man. Well, it was an odd yellow card, too, off of a free kick for the Raptors. No idea really why the yellow card came out there, unless it was from something that was said. But even there, you normally see the straight red if something was said uh, to an official or to anybody. But the yellow card came out. That's why you're always nice to your, uh, to your, offici or to your officials. Speaking of officiating, whistle goes. I think that the Bears are going to want a booking there. They won't get it, but Wellman with a little shove after the ball was into touch. And so certainly something that both teams are looking for is the officiating crew to be more consistent on both sides. And White Bear Lake capitalized not uh, far off of a free kick in the first half and a free kick here for Eastridge into the mixer and headed away. Now White Bear Lake up the far side with purpose and too far for the Bears to establish any sort of control. Well, that's but they maintain control, I believe, with the throw-in. Karras with great pressure on that far side, too. The defensive line for the Eastridge Raptors hasn't seen much action tonight, so good job on Karras for pursuing that ball and forechecking effectively in order to force a throw here for White Bear Lake in a good spot, too, in the field. I... Uh, I do see what you did there as the throw-in goes into the box, headed away by Eastridge. And in the only, as we reference at halftime, the only game where they have allowed a goal to Woodbury back on September 9th, so four days ago, they actually scored first and allowed a goal in the second half. Their only draw on the year as they are 4-0-1. Well, you look at the schedule, too, coming up for the Eastridge Raptors. After this one, Forest Lake, Moundsview, Creighton, Durham, Hall, Minneapolis, South, and Irondale. All the contests upcoming. Big matchups awaiting, certainly here for the Eastridge Raptors, especially in the suburban east. And speaking of big matchups upcoming, uh, for White Bear Lake, Apple Valley, Stillwater come to mind here. That Apple Valley start on September 18th is a 1 p.m. kick. Uh, wanted to get note of that established as this goes far side for the Bears. And Eastridge there defensively to thwart the danger. I think that last foot there by Karras, it was a good battle down in low with Larson. But Larson waited for Karras to make that mistake and touch that ball into touch and a goal kick here for the Raptors. And the Raptors taking the more traditional route with the goal kick and the goalkeeper taking that kick. Ball hit or ball kicked down rather by Wellman. Was expecting him to go high for that one. 
as White Bear Lake controls near the midfield stripe, and just as I say that, commentators curse with Eastridge in control. We play on as Lee gets out of that dangerous touch situation. Well, that pass intended there for Olsen. That's a good no call by the officiating crew, too. Lee got all ball there. I think Rogers just fell over backwards. Great challenge, great tackle by Lee, certainly, to get that ball away. You wouldn't imagine the number of times I've seen that, both as an official in my younger days and uh, as a broadcaster. You're never going to get that call. Never. As Eastridge controls this up the up the uh, far touch line. And now you're going to want to cross it. Far post out of play. Go kick to the Bears. Well, as we look here now, seven minutes being played here in half number two. So 46 minute overall. Still waiting for that high quality chance from the Raptors. Hasn't and, been there. No, and with two shots total, none on so far in the second half. You got to wonder, when is that chance going to make it? If it does at all. And White Bear Lake, along with Eastridge, playing a little pong in the midfield. Won by Eastridge. Up the near side. And I believe a goal or a, a corner kick, rather, has been surrendered. It'll be the sixth corner here for the Raptors. Again, back post has been their, their MO so far. I think it's time to make a change. No substitutes for either side as the corner kick on its way. Far post, same song, same verse, out of play. We stay here, though, as it's an Eastridge throw-in. Another wasted corner by the Raptors. At some point, you have to start trying something different because that back post, you know, that time they had players open on that back post, but just White, no urgency again. White Bear Lake also isn't giving you the giving you the time as that ball goes out of play. Ball in play on the far side off the quick throw. That's what a replacement soccer ball is for as the cross gets in and is controlled by White Bear Lake out to midfield. I will say Eastridge uh, so starting to settle defensively, but they can't get anything going on in a, or from an attacking standpoint. Until just there, that ball deflects off an elbow inside the box, and Christensen there with a little help from an elbow. But even there, too, the defender Christensen's not there. That ball is right on the goaltender again. It is. I'm with you. Eastridge with control up the near side or up the uh, near side to Larson, and it's dropped over. Eastridge again. As nine minutes almost have been played. No urgency. As White Bear late comes out of the mixer. Running to the ball is Olsen. And he has it stolen from him. Near side, Eastridge with control. Up the near touch line. And did they call a handball? No, there's a foul behind the play. Okay. On Lee again. Free kick Eastridge. Eastridge, quick free kick. And they reestablish possession. White Bear Lake substitution coming. Out of bounds, it'll go. Eastridge maintains control as this one is thrown in by Lee. Lee got it over right near Wellman. Whistle goes. Free kick White Bear Lake. And a free kick to White Bear Lake. I'll make a point on... That or on that defensive exchange there in a moment where you, I don't think what you want to do uh, if you're Eastridge is surrender penalties to uh, put a pep in your step. Well, and I, that again, that fouls one of those gray area fouls, kind of things. Me. I don't know that necessarily that it was, I mean, you could have let that go, and I think both sides would have been all right at the end of the day, but the whistle blew nonetheless, and White Bear Lake had a good look at it. But again, that ball on that, the counterattack too, just a little bit too far long for Rodgers. Wellman threw that one or uh, dropped that one over to Arana Lorando. Couldn't get a shot away. Eastridge's calling card needs to be uh, shot making as Lagravere reestablishes possession for the Raptors. 
Out of bounds. Eastridge with or with uh, possession. Ten minutes in the or into the second half. Fifty minutes into the match. Eastridge with possession. One pass too many for the Raptors, I dare say. Is that ball out of play? Well, in the possession battle, too, again, Jeff has been favoring the Raptors here. It feels as though, at least in the second half, it was that 80-20 that we saw early on in the first half before the Bears made some good adjustments. But the Raptors, no shots, to, no quality chances truly to show for it. Ball controlled by Lee. Lee got through two. Lee near side. And out of, out of play for a corner to Eastridge. Well, I think for, Middle of the goal? I think so. And for White Bear Lake, the more time that you have, the less pressure's on you. Pressure's not on White Bear Lake here. It's on Eastridge. Lee, far post. Same song, same verse. White Bear can't clear, though. Lee, blocked out of play. Towards the paying customers. That's what a replacement ball is for. As it is out of play, Lee throws it in to get us back underway. Goal kick, White Bear Lake. White Bear Lake goal kick as that ball sails. And we need a, uh, the match, the a soccer ball as McKinney enters. Uh, the senior Joe Wallach's the one that's coming out with an assist on the year for White Bear Lake. No other points to show for it as of yet, but good leadership in the midfield for the Bears and a good substitution here for McKinney again, letting that bench roll a little bit. Now, speaking of a rolling bench, do you like the unlimited substitution that we have going here in uh, high school soccer? I, I do. I think that it's player safety for one, especially at a high school league level where the, the goal of athletics is to help these people grow socially and emotionally. Right. But I think that at some point, like some sort of limitation to it, we'll have a goal kick here for the, for the Bears. I think that I'd like to see it like once, once a half per player just to try to limit it, add a little bit more strategy to the game too. That's what happens at the Division One level, the Division Three level, just to see that just a little bit different. Uh, Snowball enters the match for White Bear Lake. And Eastridge with control up the far side. Eastridge looking for offense quite simply as Lee got sandwiched and was bumped off the ball. And that'll go out of play. Goal kick for White Bear Lake. Curt, er, uh, leading into a goal kick for White Bear. I think we've heard goal kick White Bear Lake. It's now between the both halves. 14 total shots for the Raptors, but just six on goal. And especially those... Those missteps by White Bear Lake, the Raptors haven't been taking advantage of, especially inside that lower third. We've seen a lot for White Bear Lake go wrong on the defensive third in the last five minutes or so, but the Raptors just haven't been there to take advantage. Eastridge should have possession here off, off a throw, and they do. Short throw for Eastridge as that goes to Lee. Lee looking to keep his knees intact as he tried to get through two. He was unsuccessful in doing that as it goes back to midfield. Here comes White Bear Lake. Two on one if they want it. Now a two on oh breakout. Shot from inside the box leads to a White Bear Lake goal and a two nil lead. This whole rush leading the Gavin Rogers second goal tonight starts with a Nicky O'Brien play back on the defensive line. Just on the outside edge of the 18, a well-timed foot starts that counterattack. It goes from O'Brien to ball and a perfect through ball. Up ahead for Gavin Rogers, and Rogers does what he does best. He turns on the Jets. He gets into a one-on-one -on -one situation. Yes, he had ball chasing back for the rebound as well. But just like he did in the first game, or in the first half, Parkinson, he beat him, Parkinson, with a low shot to the left side. He did that the exact same time here and gives the Bears 
potentially a decisive second goal. 55th, 55th minute. And if you want to be as exact as Kurt, Kurt Passell, 54-42 the time of the goal. And Eastridge might uh, have to have the lights turned out, so to speak, as that one takes a bit of a of a or a bit of backspin rather out of play. I believe it's a goal kick. No. Let me check myself. It's a throw in. Cross. Just wide for Eastridge. They can't find a break. Well, and that is, that's a high-scoring opportunity. And it turns into another goal kick for White Bear Lake. That is as high of a scoring opportunity as you will find. Wide open out in front for that one-on-one. -on -one. Aranda Lorando had the chance to get the foot on it and put it past Christensen, but just could not time it correctly. And I think that that, that, that should have been 2-1. He had plenty of net to, to operate with. But Arand or, uh, Lorando could not uh, put the biscuit in the basket as the uh, hockey saying goes. Brought back ahead by Ravakumar. And in on goal, player down, no whistle coming. Ball back out towards the midfield line where Nathaniel Lee waits for it. Lee goes down. There's the whistle. And a free kick up coming for Eastridge. I think that there should have been a whistle on that play inside the six. I'm not sure, again, if it was just embellishment by the player who was down and low for Eastridge, but I do think that some sort of a whistle should have been here. They'll get it from further out. And for Eastridge now, this will be their fifth free kick on the attacking side of midfield. Let's see what happens here. Because they are going to continue to get these high-quality chances if they continue to work. But they have 23 minutes and two goals yet to get three if they want to come out with all three points. And a mighty mountain to climb as Lee. Free kick right in on goal. Save is made. And Mosier, by the way, the substitute coming in for White Bear Lake. Want to clean up that little piece of business as the free kick or the uh, goal kick from Christensen bounces around. Out of play, White Bear Lake ball. 23 and a quarter remaining in the second half of the first of two. Well, for White Bear Lake again, they now being 23 minutes up, they can take as much time as they'd like to. The only reason the clock would stop is on substitutions. So whenever that ball goes into touch, Bears can feel free to take as much time as they'd like. Pending that the whatever whistle the official might blow to cause some urgency out of them, they can take as much time here as they need. And Eastridge... To, your po to support your point, Eastridge needs to play with urgency that we've not seen since the start of the match. Speaking of urgency, White Bear Lake brings it up field. And the ball settled down by Mosier. Mosier fakes, loses possession. Nice slide tackle there as the ball kicked into touch by or, uh, off the head of Eastridge's Reva Kumar. Turning the corner inside the box. White Bear Lake with the defense to clear the ball back towards midfield. Uh, a great job there by Eli Semanic for White Bear Lake to make sure that that ball, rather than going into touch for a corner kick, made sure to play it back out into the field of play. Just a wonderful job. Great ball there. Wonderful defense by Semanic. Still battling for the ball around the 30-yard line. And Eastridge is... LaGravere comes out with possession for the Raptors. Crossed into the box. And it rainbows into midfield, courtesy of White Bear Lake's defensive core. Foul against White Bear Lake. 21 minutes to play in the contest. 2-0 to White Bear Lake. Only the third goal that Eastridge has uh, surrendered, or the second and third goals that Eastridge has surrendered in this young season. As a free kick comes in, far post. Save made. Christensen, we've said that all night. Well, and eight times the, actually, White Bear Math, nine times the Eastridge Raptor. The Eastridge Raptors have tested Christensen, and all nine 
have been somewhere between the knees and the top of the shoulders. The shots have not been high quality for the Eastridge Raptors. And there's another example of a shot that just is not on goal, creating those high scoring opportunities. They had one about three minutes ago, but they missed the foot on it. And that's the difference so far. We will just call you Nostra Westadamas. 20 and a half minutes to play, entering the fourth quarter, if you will, of action here in the first of two high school soccer matchups on a lovely Monday night, at least thus far. I digress as the ball is still bouncing around and out of play. It'll go to White Bear Lake. I think for White Bear Lake, this might be the longest 20 minutes of their lives so far this season. We'll certainly have to sit and wait and see what the Bears are able to do here in the last 20. But if they've played as well in the defensive third as they have in the first 60 minutes of play, they should be able to come out here with the win. You would think two goals would be enough to win to win the contest as Olsen brings this one up far si or near side rather. Gets blocked away in Eastridge. Sends that one out of play as uh, the Eastridge girls are entering White Bear Stadium for their upcoming game. Throw in coming for White Bear Lake, who are content to just let the clock melt. The Substitution seven, coming to Frayne, entering the game for the Bears. Free kick, Eastridge. And right on cue, an Eastridge free kick. Lee crosses into the box, headed far side, out of play. Did that touch Christensen? Goal no. Kick Goal kick coming to White Bear. Tick, 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 tick. <laughs> White Bear like weather in the storm, and they have to continue to do so. Pun intended. Pun was intended. Brought back to the midfield circle. And Le Graver controls this for the Eastridge Raptors. They need grade-A chances, and they needed them uh, from the word go. Brought back ahead by the Raptors, though, as the cross blocked on the way in. Eastridge wanting something, and they're not going to find anything but a throw-in. One of our messages, Jeff, in the first half was the frustration the Raptors were feeling with the officiating crew here tonight. I think the lateness of the calls or the, the calls coming out of position to where they should have been will be something that the Eastridge Raptors will be frustrated with as they look at the second half of play here. But you you know how, how you alleviate the officials perceived issues offensive chances well, and Eastridge has not had many of those no, they've had them they oh, just haven't been high quality great. and so it's like we when you look at it here our key to the game was how well would Wiper defend in the defensive third and how well would they get Gavin Rogers going through midfield and into the attacking third both of the goals from Gavin Rogers both off a defensive play in the back third so this is exactly what White Bear Lake's key to success has been, and they've been attacking well and operating the game plan that they had to to come away with a win. Lee, cross, far post, and they're mistiming headers in the box. Like on, on that sequence, that Nathaniel Lee uh, cross should have had a, an Eastridge Raptor head on it, and it did not. Well, and you look at it too, the goals for White Bear Lake. Eastridge miscue, right to Rogers. Right. Then the quick counterattack. Eastridge doesn't have a counterattack opportunity at all tonight. Or if they did, White Bear Lake had seven players on the defensive side of midfield. They were ready. They were set up for it. And that that leads to just being pre being prepared on both the offensive and defensive sides as White Bear has been throughout the 60 minutes or almost 64 minutes now that we have played of the 80 scheduled 16 minutes to play brought back ahead by Eastridge controlled by Wellman 
Wellman dropped it back to midfield. Wouldn't you want to be going north and south if you're Eastridge? Finally, some north and south movement from Eastridge with some purpose, at least here as far as the second half goes. Lee up the near side, touched on. White Bear too strong? No. Eastridge maintains control. Brought ahead by Johnston. Johnston. Nutmegs around one. Johnston crosses into the box. All the nutmegs in the world need to get you a shot on goal, and that's something that Eastridge, at least from a quality standpoint, didn't get there. Although, I will say they drew the corner. Well, that's where White Bear Lake, you look for that compactness. You look for that positioning on that White Bear Lake defensive back line. It was exactly where it needed to be, where White Bear was giving nothing inside the six. Perfectly defensive by White Bear. Corner, far post, same song, same verse. 0 for 8 now are the Raptors on corners. The execution just hasn't been there, but it is now. And Eastridge on the board. Waste management opportunity finally comes the Raptors' way, and it is 2-1. Still in favor of White Bear Lake, 14-45 left to play. So... Time of the goal, 65-15. Well, and the goal in the 66th minute, I'm not necessarily sure who cleaned that up. I think it was you who got the foot on it, but that we where's that been from Eastridge all game? Exactly. I'm with you. Eastridge now down a goal. They give the goal to Nathaniel Lee in the 66th minute. And... To a point that we we made earlier in this half, Eastridge, if they continue to play now knowing that they have the con the confidence from an attacking perspective, could theoretically come out with what would be their second draw of the season. Well, and I think that even even if the the result does get level here, as we'll have another whistle and a free kick for White Bear Lake. I don't think that a draw is going to be good enough for Eastridge. I don't doubt with, I, with, I agree. With the statistical advantage that the Raptors have had tonight, anything less than three points is unacceptable. And so far, with the result being what it is, it's not what the Raptors were hoping for. Especially going down or getting out to a 2 0 hole, as this has worked ahead by Wellman out of play. Eastridge with a, with a throw, quick throw from Lee. Lee. Went over to Johnston with it. Johnston nutmegs and gets around one, but he couldn't get around two and three, drawing a foul, though. Free kick Raptors. Now what do you do on a free kick if you're Eastridge? I think you curl it. You got to get elevation and curl it. Look for that top corner. And on the opportunities that Eastridge has had, aside from that cleaning up the garbage goal, everything's been right at the goaltender. So you have to get some bodies moving and then move from left to right. Looking like La Gravere to take the free kick. No, it was. And the wall stopped it for White Bear Lake. 12.50 to go in the game. White Bear Lake looking to switch fields, and they are running with purpose. Back across midfield, here come the Bears. 2v2 up the far side with trailers coming. Crossed. Actually, uh, fields were switched. And it goes towards Olsen. Whistle went, and I believe it'll be a goal kick. Free kick or actually, it'll be a, an Eastridge free kick. Another. And I know what you... I know you were responding to the to the play at the end of the sequence. Oh, well, another... That... I think Moser just overran the ball just a little bit there. Because that... that that should have been a shot on. Eastridge looking to capitalize. Far side in the box. White Bears defense too strong. Out O oh, play. It'll go to Eastridge on the throw in from near the corner flag. Shot in the box gets blocked. Don't know who sold himself out on the play for White Bear. Kept alive by Eastridge though as this is Le Gravere. It was... Uh, Whistle actually went, and we have a, a man down behind the play for Eastridge, that being Henry Lippman. 
And the clock halts with 11.32 to play while he is looked at. Well, White Bear Lake's training staff will come out to take a look and see what's going on here. We were... The, it's odd to see something like that happen, so you certainly wonder and hope for the, the best for Littman. Indeed. But odd to see, away from the play, non-contact, nothing at all there. Certainly odd to see. Cramp? Potentially. And ho hopefully, if it is the cramp, hopefully that's all that it is. Littman being looked at. Now... We spoke of timing rules earlier in uh, comparison, w or, uh, comparing high school to co the collegiate level and professional levels. Reason why I say that is, is you'd see a heck of a lot of extra time at the professional level for something like this. But at the high school level here in Minnesota, and I think they're doing this the right way, clock stops. Well, and on injuries across all sports, the clock stops immediately. And... No matter the severity, I think that this this benefits both teams. It benefits Eastridge because you have the chance to talk on the sideline to figure out what your play is going to be. You have a goal by doing what you should have been doing for the first 65 minutes of this game. You do it once, it turns into a goal. You have to do that exact same thing if you're the Raptors to be able to tie and pull this game level. For White Bear Lake, it gives you a chance to reset your defense who has been tested and pressured for the first 70-ish minutes of this game, and it gives you the opportunity to reset and take a much-needed pause because you're going to be shot at pretty heavily for the next 11 minutes and 32 seconds, and you have to be ready to withstand anything because the Raptors, it's taken them so long to turn on the Jets, but they're firing, and they have a chance here to pull even. Uh, speaking of pulling, uh, you don't need to pull a goalkeeper until we get to uh, that 200 by 85 foot sheet of ice uh, in the winter time. So I don't think that's going to happen. However, back underway with a drop ball to Eastridge. Ball crossed into the box, and it'll lead to a goal kick goal for kick. Christensen. 11 minutes and some change left in the bank in game number one here at White Bear Stadium. Weather permitting, the uh, girls' varsity contest will occur, and that's a game we're looking forward to. Well, that one, I think, is the premier matchup. It's been a section semifinal each of the last two seasons with some pretty intriguing storylines in each of those games. There's a rivalry in girls' soccer between Eastridge and White Bear Lake, and certainly, weather permitting, we will be happy to cover it. If not, we'll be back here for football on Friday with the Bears and the Moundsview Mustangs, 7 p.m., hopefully live. And uh, you are scheduled to call that one, are you not? I am not. Ah, who is, uh, do you know who is doing the honors? I'm afraid I do not. I will be out of town for something called a bridal um, thing where I'm getting <laughs> married on Saturday, so I won't be in town. Early congratulations. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, as Eastridge controls this. It'll go to Johnston, and Johnston drop that one off, eventually getting it back to Block. Block crossed. And Eastridge back. <laughs> uh, Eastridge goes back to their calling card that has not worked all game. Cross and same song, same verse. Although Eastridge with control here, not uh, alleviating possession as quickly as we thought. Block w uh, went down low with it. And the cross, far post. That has not worked for the Raptors all game. But Christensen... Had a little bit of trouble with it. Nine and a half minutes remaining in the contest. Fourth shot on goal of the second half for the Raptors. Overall, that's shot number 18 in the game for Eastridge. The clearances have to be deep in Eastridge territory here. Eastridge with possession. Again, right as I say that, White Bear takes it. Commentators curse in play. Brought back ahead by the Bears up the near side. And all the defense in the world cannot help Eastridge right now with the situation they're in. Ball may have been taken off the head of that White Bear Lake Bear. However, Johnston with control for Eastridge as we play on. 8.53 to go in the game as Eastridge now playing with the urgency that we have needed to see. Ball dropped over to Johnston, 
Johnston waiting for a trailer. That is Block. Block up the near side. Block waiting. And he dribbled himself into a corner where the waste management will have to be controlled by Eastridge. And Johnston does the honors. And actually on the control there was Larson who cleaned up the trash. Brought over to the far side by the Raptors. And across into the box. A little short. Eastridge now getting dirty inside the six. And it would not go. Out of bounds to Eastridge who throws it in very quickly. I'll get you in here in a moment, West Ad, as this one is uh, kicked back up towards the midfield strike. 7.54 left to play. Kicked in Christensen with the save. Well, and you see what White Bear Lake setting up defensively. The only thing, the only one that they have giving any pressure to the ball outside the edge of the third is you have Gavin Rogers up high looking for that counterattack opportunity. Otherwise, you have 10 men generally low below the attacking third line. And that's what we're going to see the rest of the time. If you can keep those balls flung deep into East Ridge territory and make them go the full length of the pitch, you're going to be in good shape. And you melt the clock. Yeah. That's what and that's what you essentially need to do. And White Bear Lake has done that since they had a 2-0 lead earlier. Brought back ahead by Eastridge. Across the midfield, striping into the attacking third. Up on the far side come the Raptors, looking for a shot opportunity that does not materialize. Kept alive, though, by Eastridge, and Rava Kumar does the honors. White Bear Lake will clear, not deep enough for my taste, as they'll control, or the Raptors, rather, will control in the midfield. Kept alive by Rava Kumar, waiting for a teammate and a nutmeg around the player, uh... Keeps the ball with Eastridge. Substitutions upcoming. Lee back in for Eastridge. And Henderson, I believe, in for White Bear Lake. And the clock doesn't stop on substitutions yet. It's just inside five minutes, so good sub there for the Bears. And another wasted header for Eastridge. Out of play, goal kick, White Bear Lake. Well, and going back to the play before the subs even came on, you could have had a foul on Moser there, just outside the edge of the 18. I think he got a little bit of the jersey there of, of Ravi Kumar, and that's really a big difference that could have happened in this game where that would have been a free kick from 15 yards out. Ball headed down. White Bear Lake looking to melt the clock as we're under six minutes to play in the contest. East Ridge looking for urgency up the far side. You're not going to find it there as you need grade A chances instead of stuff out on the boundary. Brought back over towards the midfield line. 1v1 if White Bear Lake wants it. And they come ahead. Shot in, save made, Parkinson. Five and a quarter left to play. Eastridge looking to come ahead. And they've got four up offensive, or four up in an attacking role for the Raptors. And the ball chested down. Whistle. I certainly didn't hear one, but it, it is an Eastridge free kick. I wonder if that was almost a handball that got ruled there. And they're going quick, too. Quick free kick. Down in the box. No call made. Nathaniel Lee and everybody in the stadium thought the call was going to be made there in the box. It was not. We play on with four and a half minutes to play. Wow, Jeff, I'm speechless. That had to have been a penalty. I'm with you. Deep free, or deep uh, shot opportunity goes by the wayside. As, an, as a former official, I'm with you. That, that has to be a penalty. I know that, again, I've, I've taught half of the, actually, that number's dwindling. I've taught most <laughs> of the students on this roster at this point. And so I'm a, I'll am admit, I'm a little bit biased towards White Bear Lake, White Bear Hill Murray 2020. Again, check it out. You know how biased I am. <laughs> that has to be a penalty to Eastridge. But it wasn't. And so, again, the frustration that Eastridge has with the officiating tonight is just going to continue. Yep, and that, that'll boil over into their next contest uh, against Forest Lake in two days' time. So Wednesday night, quick shot, save made. Out of play, that one will go. 
3.40 left to play in a 2-1 contest to White Bear Lake. 11 shots on goal for the Raptors so far. 20 total shots for East Ridge. Only one pass to goaltender Christensen. He's been spectacular this evening. Another word I would use would be stellar. 3.23 to go in the game. 77th minute in progress. Ball headed down. You can't have much of that if you're Eastridge and looking for offense. Out of play, it'll go to Eastridge on the throw. And a quick throw it is. Crossed. Not enough of it. Goal kick to White Bear Lake. Under three minutes to go. God. If you're if you're the Easter Raptors, you just look at the missed chances you have and just the the that's just it, the missed chances. 0 for 8 on corners, 20 shots on, just one goal, or 20 shots attempted, 11 on, one goal to show for it. The chances have been missed tonight by East Ridge. And Johnston just missed another chance or another potential chance for East Ridge to tie the game. Now they're playing with some some speed. Le Gravere, near side, cross. Not going to work as that ball out of the mixer still in East Ridge's control. Out O play. Two minutes and a dime remaining in the contest. As the quick throw from Block allows us to resume play. Sitkowicz to Block. Cross. Far post. White Bear there. Not out of danger yet are the Bears as that shot Ooh. bounces off a body in front of the cage. And Block will chest that one down. Near side it goes to Johnston. Johnston gets around one. I'm waiting for a cross. Block gives it to me. Far post. And blockage from White Bear Lake not helping Eastridge. The clock not on their side. White Bear Lake will clear that one away but not out. Into the box the, the Raptors go. Having trouble settling it down, though, are the Raptors. Near side, Johnston crosses. Ball a rainbow into the box. Headed down as it pinballs. And out, no. Second effort allows it to clear. One minute and five seconds to play. Eastridge now feeling like having a, an extra attacker on the ice if you're looking at the hockey example. Brought ahead by Johnston. Headed away and out of play for a throw into Eastridge. If you're the Raptors, you gotta push Parkinson up in the attacking third here. Go for the at least go for the tie. Pull pull yourself level here. Johnston. Far post. Score. <laughs> Waiting to see who scored the goal for Eastridge, but it is a tie game. Late in the going. And Eastridge celebrating as they come back for the kickoff. The goal. With his first goal. That is what we've needed to see out of the Raptors the entirety of this game. It took until the 80th minute to get that. But finally, the cross over, looking for that connection, looking for just that little piece of the contact. That's enough to get the ball back in the net and give the Raptors level before we head to overtime. I would typically say better late than never there. However, overtime upcoming as we have 20 seconds left in the regulation 80. Ball bouncing in the defensive box. Bodies flying out of bounds, corner. We'll have to hurry. I don't know that they'll have enough time to be able to get to it. I doubt it. Three, two, As the horn one. goes now. 2-2 two, two our score. And so we will head to an extra session to decide this. Well, let's recap how we got here. Gavin Rogers started the scoring for White Bear Lake in the ninth minute off of a wonderful forecheck delivered 
by Mr. Rogers. He forced the goaltender Parkinson to turn the ball over, and that allowed the Bears to have that one to nothing lead. Then, in the 55th minute, it would be Gavin Rogers again off of a great defensive play by Nicky O'Brien that started a counter rush. O'Brien up to Snowball, and then up ahead to Rogers, who was able to get past the goaltender. But the Raptors, again, the better of the team here across the first 80 minutes of regulation time. And it looks like that that's all perhaps that we have. I think we might be calling her a day. I don't know. <laughs> we'll figure that out. But then it was Lee in the 65th minute who, after cleaning up the garbage and failing to do so in the first 65 minutes, they finally were able to do so. Then in the 80th minute, that cross looking for the header on the far post finally paid off as it was the senior, Jehoon Yu, who was able to finally pull the game level as the Raptors and the Bears are tied at two. What's more dangerous, a man who isn't afraid of death or one who's found everything to live for? I asked him if he was proud of me. He emphatically said yes as he laid his pecan-colored head on my chest and I went through my mind a thousand times to figure out what that could possibly mean. And every single example ended in motivation for me. So you may not be afraid to die, but I'm more afraid to let them down. And I found something to live for, which is a dangerous motive forever fueled. See, your thoughts may be involuntary, but my actions are very calculated. I was a man with a plan, but now I'm a dad with a decree, and you can't take that from me. My sons ain't raised by no coward, and they won't be one either. If this be the measure of a man, the yardstick gonna need way more meters. I take it too far, so they never come up short, because I found everything to live for. Back at the White Bear Stadium in White Bear Lake, Minnesota, as the boys' teams with Eastridge and White Bear Lake are set to finish off their 2 2 draw through 80 minutes with the voice of St. Thomas Hockey and other sports, Alex West, at my side, Jeff Disher here, and uh, I'm ready for some overtime. I'm surprised we're here, if we're being <laughs> totally honest. We we jumped off the air about um, an hour ago, and we thought that the boys game was over. That's what we were told, is that it was over. But no, now we have two of five, and hey. we'll see what happens where I – yeah, go ahead, Jeff. That, no, you, you are just fine. Uh, two five-minute extra time sessions as a quick shot there bounces off the football crossbar, and it will lead to a goal kick – for Eastridge. Well, I think for White Bear Lake, too, if you joined us in the regulation time of this game, White Bear Lake was on the back of the heels. And I suppose the Bears took that 80 minutes saying, okay, we have overtime. Let's turn on the gas. Let's turn a little pressure on. Let's make something happen here. And that's what we saw in that first rush. So arguably, aside from the counterattacks, the best rushes of the game for the Bears. And Eastridge hardly... Uh, hardly utilizing control in the first minute of the first half of overtime as White Bear Lake back on the offense seemingly where they were an hour ago as this one is driven up the far side by or up the near side by Dufresne. Dufresne crossed in front and the ball bounces outside the box where White Bear will control. Ball uh. Out of play. I believe it'll lead to a White Bear corner. That'll be a throw as it was just, it was close. It was a good positioning too by the defender for Eastridge to make sure that it was a throw instead of a corner. Back underway we go. 324 left in the opening half of extra time. And you look at the stats too from that regulation 80. It was a big difference too where White Bear Lake had a corner, but it was with 10 seconds left, so not even getting a chance on it. And Eastridge with eight corners that they all missed on. Goal kick up coming here for Eastridge. For those just joining us, Alex West stand at my side. Jeff Disher here on SCC TV, the home of White Bear Lake Athletics as a goal kick is taken by Eastridge goaltender, Dylan Parkinson, or at least we believe that is it, er, who is still in the net. With the weather delay, who knows what 
who knows if the substitution could have theoretically been made. A pair of goals for Gavin Rogers. Open the scoring for White Bear Lake, a 2-0 lead until the 66th minute when Lee scored in the 66th, and then you with just seconds to spare, ultimately tying the game at 2-2, leading us to this extra uh, uh, time. Eastridge controlling as that goes back to Parkinson. Parkinson will put toe to leather and put the ball back in play. Ball headed down. Uh, by Eastridge's U, the aforementioned goal scorer, and the ball out of play. Throw in for Eastridge. And the throw in courtesy of Degon. And the ball just out of the reach of U as White Bear Lake looked to turn and go. They couldn't do the business. And Eastridge with possession over on the far side of the pitch. 90 seconds left in the first half of extra time there will be another five minute extra time period upcoming as that ball leaks through the box it'll go down as a goal kick to white bear lake actually let me correct myself it'll be a corner kick to eastridge well we mentioned just a few moments ago eastridge 0 for 9 through regulation time off of corners you could argue that the first goal was on a corner but we get one here through the and they went back to the same song that they went back to in regulation it still sounds the same far post no success white bear with the throw after all of the business is settled and the ball chested down we aren't in golden goal so the next goal won't win it but who will get that next goal if it occurs. White Bear looking to do the business like they did in the first half. Race to the ball. Won by East Ridge and a great defensive sellout. As the flag stays down. And I mentioned regulation. I'm as much of a White Bear Lake fan as anybody, and I think that there that was a good call, keeping the flag down in that instance. I think that Rogers' you speed got in front of it, but... You don't want to impact the match if you are a match official. Foul there for Eastridge. White Bear Lake free kick. And a clear foul there, but out of time. And that'll do it for the first half of extra time. We will, we will change ends. We'll actually keep it right here. And uh, physical play dominating that five-minute stretch. Well, and for the first time in, in this soccer game... In the 85 minutes have been played, White Bear Lake the better of the teams in that stretch. And uh, the the MO for Eastridge on those corners, again, just not good enough. You had 80 minutes to sit there and have a conversation about what you should do on the corner, and what you came with was the exact same thing as before. I don't think that conversation was even had as Eastridge, would you, as Eastridge controls this off the kick. I'll bring you in in just a moment as... Eastridge looking for a cross opportunity that does not materialize. It'll be a goal kick to White Bear Lake. Wow. Goal kick to White Bear Lake. And that's exactly the break that they needed there, too, is that as we, we saw a couple of times that sub early of Ravi Kumar in regulation time, that was... Off a of yellow card. Off of the yellow card, too, in the 21st minute. That was exact, exactly what the Bears needed. That whistle going their way, and here's another. Two all are score 35 seconds into the second phase of extra time. White Bear ball on the far side off the free kick. He's Alex, I'm Jeff. Ball chested down by White Bear Lake. And the Bears looking to maintain control. We still have the girls game yet to come for you here on SCC. As these teams at a stalemate in the middle of the, of the pitch. Ball kicked in on... Christensen, he'll make the save on the bouncer. 13 shots on goal to White Bear Lake's four in the contest. That's more of the rider we saw from the Raptors throughout the course of the game. White Bear Lake looking to, to switch field position. They can't do the business. And Eastridge looking to control up the far side. Second phase of extra time, middle stages of that phase. As White Bear Lake handles the ball. 
outlet pass to about the 30 yard line and White Bear Lake is in business up the far side. Crossing opportunity, low and in on goal, save made Parkinson. Oh, that's at Rogers again. You can't leave him in space and he made a great chance there, just couldn't cross it in front of Anderson. Bodies flying as the ball controlled by. They're giving it to Eastridge on the throw. White Bear Lake not happy as a quick throw from Block, and we resume play. Kept alive by Ravi Kumar, who had the yellow card in the first half. And a crossing opportunity leads to nothing for Eastridge, although the ball is not out of danger by any stretch of the imagination if you're White Bear Lake. Now, as a slide tackle occurs, whistle goes. What have we here? Well, it's just outside the edge of the 18, but it's going to be another offensive side free kick for Eastridge. And I don't know that that should have been called because I think it was more the attacking player going down. I'm not sure that that should have been a call. Eastridge free kick. And the play that we've seen since the start of extra time, physical on both ends. Free kick coming. Wow. Save made. What a save by Christensen. Well read, and that we on the free kicks inside of the 30-yard line out from that goal line. We saw that a number of times. They'll get their 10th corner of the game now. We'll see what they do. Far side corner, far post, and it wouldn't go. White Bear Lake will clear it back to midfield where Eastridge does a little waste management, and that ball just evades the uh, outstretched feet of William Larson. Great using the body there by Moser to make sure that the Raptors didn't have a chance at that ball. Eastridge with possession off the throw as that one is thrown back to Keenan Block. Back to his goaltender goes Block with that pass and they'll restart from ground zero as it were on the offensive side. Well, and Lee feeling frustrated on that left side for the Raptors too. He's wide open on that left side and his Raptor teammates just haven't been able to find him on that left side wing. Final minute of play, bodies fly, foul Eastridge, White Bear Lake ball on the free kick but bodies flying and the physical presence on both sides has changed the course of the game since we got back to extra time, Alex. Well, and I think too, it's part of that, you know, if you're White Bear Lake, you're thinking, oh, we got a shot at this. They came out early for the overtime. And unfortunately, if 30 seconds here, this might be all she wrote. 30 seconds left in the, over, or in the extra time as that one bounces the way of Johnston. Johnston tried to get through two and usually one into two doesn't go as White Bear Lake with possession. Maybe a late chance if they can get it past their midfield strike. Now White Bear Lake committing mistakes. Four seconds to play. And a shot from 30 yards out does not materialize. Game over. And we end the way we started, although four goals have changed that. Eastridge, two. White Bear Lake, two. Well, and Jeff, I think the conversation on both sides is what we talked about at the tail half of the second half, is we started to, we started to recognize that Eastridge was not going to be okay with a, with a loss, but they were able to pull even in time. They're still not happy with that result, especially after sitting and waiting for an hour. They're definitely not happy with that result. But to come back and tie it, that shows good resiliency that the second best team in the state should show as that team. On the other side for White Bear Lake, they're kind of in that same spot where nobody expected them to be close. And statistically in the first 80, they weren't. They were not close here statistically as we ran down at the end of regulation time. However, effort by the goaltender Christensen. Gavin Rogers is... Uh, tie against the Eastridge Raptor goaltenders. Both goals coming on the counter or a forecheck. Yeah. When we started the game, it was how well is White Bear Lake going to play in the defensive third? How well are they going to feed Gavin Rogers to start goals? Rogers did both of the things on his end and were it not for the last 15 minutes of regulation time, White Bear Lake held up just fine on that back third. And key number three that we missed, defensive mistakes. Especially leading in the first half to both of White Bear Lake's goals from Rogers. Well, I mean, it was for, for Eastridge, this is drop points, and it's drop points that may hurt them, especially in a suburban East Conference where Stillwater, Creighton Durham Hall, Roseville, those teams will be there at the end of the season. 
But if you're the Raptors, a tie here, you're okay with it. But those defensive miscues have to be cleaned up. And like we spent 66 minutes talking about, no urgency right. from this Eastridge team. It's right. like they were playing Lacks not to lose. Lackadaisically. And so what will happen here is I think that if you're the Eastridge coaching staff, you look into your next games and you realize that you have to play a more consistent and a more dominant 80 minutes in each of the next games because that is not the Eastridge Raptors team that we're used to seeing. We will get set for the girls, and that comes up on the other side.